today I am making shepherd's pie, but I'm calling it quarantine shepherd's pie because I'm using this canned food because we have a lot of it. We bought a lot for this time. So I'm using canned peas, uh, peas and carrots and instead of creamer on the mashed potatoes, I'm going to use cream of mushroom to add a little extra flavor. So I always like to add a little extra flavor wherever I can. So we're going to start with the mashed potatoes. I have boiling water with a little bit of salt and I like to cut them in half just to cut down on the cooking time because otherwise it takes forever and we get impatient. So I'll cut them in half like this. And so um, while the potatoes are cooking, I have that uh, pot on medium high. We want to do our mise en place, which means cut up all your vegetables so that they're ready to use once you're ready to start cooking. So I'm going to start by separating the white from the green because I'm going to cook the white part of this chive I'm using two chives. And then I'm going to use the green part as garnish for our shepherd's pie. And also you want to have a nice pair of... Um, knives and these are pretty good probably need to sharpen them a little because it's been a while but they are doing the trick through my knife skills so um and how much onion you use is really up to you we actually really like onion in this house so i think i'm going to use a whole one and once you cook them down down they really do shrink and they just add more flavor. So we're just gonna do a whole onion. Um, oops, and I'm just gonna dump everything in here. These little white tips also. I'm using a little olive oil. And this should be really hot. Just put that in there and cook it down until it's, um, a little transparent. Now that the onions are pretty transparent, um, I'm gonna add the meat and my little mixture of seasonings that I made, which is basically black pepper, my Himalayan salt, coriander, cumin, as much as chili peppers as you want. We like things a little spicy here. And my little secret ingredient, a little pinch of nutmeg. And I like to add this to like warm hearty foods because it's a warm hearty ingredient seasoning. So I added just a little pinch. So we're gonna add that to our transparent onions. So these are pretty nicely cooked. We're using Beyond Beef, which is like ground beef, but better because you don't feel stuffed and full and you don't have a dead animal inside your stomach. You can use um, real beef, but I would recommend Beyond. Most of my recipes are vegetarian. So we're gonna use all of this. Boom, how real does that look? And then we're gonna add my seasonings and just break it down like ground beef. So that's nicely seasoned. And I'm also gonna add a little squirt of this tomato paste just to add a little extra flavor. You can add regular tomatoes, but I'm just gonna add this also for color. You know, you eat with your eyes as well and you want this to look nice and bright and red. So just a little, like maybe a tablespoon. And, and it's always safe to test this before to see if you have enough salt, pepper, and all the yummy stuff you like because it's not raw meat. So you can go ahead and taste, and I did taste it earlier, and it's perfect. So once this is cooking and you see it getting its nice little fake meat color. Oh, crash. I'm gonna add these canned peas and carrots. 
last, like at the very last three minutes, five minutes at the most, because they don't need to cook for too long. You don't want to overcook it and have mushy stuff. I'm just gonna drain that. extra time in the oven. What I've been doing a lot lately, one because it's really good for you, is adding garlic, but I add it at the very last minute to where it's almost raw, uh, because one, it's very pungent and tasty, and it's just good for you. So we're gonna squeeze some of that. The little garlic squeezer. Or you can finely chop it. Bring it a close up of it, it's dirty. Um, or you can just finely chop. So we're gonna do this garlic here and then we're just gonna let this sit and we're not gonna touch it again until it goes back in the oven. Push that a little, because it gets stuck. You have to squish it. Press it twice. And you can add as much as you want. I'm gonna drain the potatoes. Probably should have been drained a long time ago, but it's okay. I'm gonna put it here. As you can see, I moved things around. So here, we're gonna add some of this, ah, like a tablespoon of butter. I think my measurements are a little off, but more butter is better. So just that that much butter. I'm gonna wait for that to melt a little bit. Well, you don't have to wait, whatever. I'm gonna add my potatoes. To mush that, and then we're gonna add our cream of mushroom. I've never done this before, so we're gonna hope that it works out well. If it's too thick, then we'll just add regular cream. But I did see a recipe where this is doable, so we're gonna do that. Yeah, mix a mix a. There's little chunks of mushroom on here. And now I do have fresh mushroom, but if I start using all my fresh vegetables, then it won't be a quarantine shepherd's pie. So she only uses much canned food. Just to show that you can get creative and make yummy food with canned food as well. Look how creamy this is looking already. It's yummy. And so now we're gonna do salt, pepper, use my handy dandy Himalayan salt. Just enough, cause potato needs a lot of salt, but you know, not too much. Pepper, I don't know if I mentioned, but we love pepper in this house. So we always put a little bit more than your average person. Oops, all right, that's pretty good. And then a little thyme also, here it is. Normally I would add like fresh thyme or fresh rosemary, but this will do. Just mix that in. And then also we got some fresh organic garlic cream cheese. And there's also vegan cream cheese, which I've had that tastes just the same and it's really good too. This much cream cheese, not too much. Just enough to make the flavor noticeable in there. A little hint of cheesiness. Okay, so. Mm. Taste it. Perfect. So now that it's basically done, I have it on low. I add my raw garlic. And this time I added two big Damn. cloves. Oops, missed them. All that. Whoops, getting a little messy, but it's okay. So that's plenty. I don't need to spray what's left over on that thing. And just let that sit for now. And then we're gonna move on to the crust that's gonna go on top of this shepherd's pie because we want a little more texture than what we have going on there. 
So for the crust, I'm gonna top it with panko breadcrumbs, about this much, just to cover the top. I added a little thyme, and I'm gonna add, I guess I'll add the rest of this. We'll just have to get more. <laughs> Parmesan. And I'm gonna grate some of this Jalapeno creamy jack cheese. You can use cheddar, you can use more Parmesan, or you can just leave it at that. But for the sake of it, we're gonna make it a little extra cheesy and golden on the top this way. I'm gonna grate a little more. And something that we do here, um, or I do, is freeze my cheese when I buy it and then I'll defrost it or take it out of the freezer when I'm ready to use it because it keeps the, fr the, the cheese fresh and longer. If that makes sense. It makes it last longer, that's what I meant. All right, so that's ready. So um, now we're gonna boil it so that we can get this nice and golden and melted, but everything's pretty much cooked. Now we just have to assemble. So you can use like a nine by eight, or I don't know what that's called, but like, you know, one of those square ones. Uh, but we're gonna use this for today. Um, and just make sure that your pots and pans are heat resistant so that you can put them in the oven. Otherwise, you just have to use like a tin foil pan. Yummy potatoes, I'm gonna put them on top. Try not to make a mess. Stop the cameraman from eating all of it. Get it nice and spread out. Look how bomb and beautiful this looks. Like if you're having people over, you could like even serve it on this, and it will look so nice. And everybody can just go and serve themselves. All right. Now I'm gonna add my crust. You can also make shepherd's pie without a crust and it'll be just as good, but I wanted to go all out for you guys. Pop it in the oven for like 10 minutes and we're ready to eat. Been in here for 10 minutes. It's ready to bring out. It's nice and golden brown. Taste of the resistance. And it smells divine. And that's it. That's my quarantine shepherd's pie. Then you just serve and enjoy. Should I taste it? I should taste it. Feels like a warm hug during these quarantine times. So if you make it, let me know if you liked it. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.